Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be converting this mountain bike uh, into an e-bike for the missus. Now Kerry is only um, around five foot tall so I had to get the smallest adult mountain bike I could with the smallest frame. We went out and looked at a few bikes. Um, this is the one she liked the most. It's a rock rider from Decathlon. And you guys don't need to go out and buy a bike, especially for converting. You might even have a bike in your shed um, that's more than adequate for converting into an e-bike. As you can see here, I've already gone ahead and fitted the twist throttle, the grips, the brakes, the LCD screen to the handlebars, which I don't think warrants being on video. One thing I do want to touch on is with this frame being such a small frame, we've got to try and fit a battery in here into the triangle of the frame. Um, like I said, this is such a small frame that um, you're going to want to do some measuring uh, to find the right size battery to fit in there. If you're using a mid to large size bike, um, you won't have any issues finding a battery to fit. Also, what you're going to want to think about is not just your battery going in here, is where you're going to mount your controller. Now, I opted to go for a rear wheel hub motor that has got the controller built into it which is going to be a lot cleaner, less wires to hide, uh, and overall look better. This is the battery uh, I opted to buy, um, what should fit the dimensions of this frame. Um, it's a 48 volt, um, 13 amp hour battery, which should be plenty for a mountain bike like this. But um, if you was to mount it to, say, my bike, um, you won't get as much distance, you probably only get about 10 mile out of this on my bike. But on a bike like this, which is a lot lighter, you're going to get some decent miles. As you can see, it fits just about right. Turn that off. Just about right into the frame. And we're going to mount it and see what it's like. Now you do need a bit of space at the top because this actually slides up and comes off the rail and that's how you take it on and off your bike. The battery just slides off the rail like that and this rail get, gets mounted to your frame. We can bolt this to the frame somewhere around here and your battery just slides on. I think we'll make that our first job, getting this installed on the bike. What we have here is some protective foam, which is very sticky on one side. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to stick that to the frame, which is going to protect the frame from any rubbing that the battery might do on it. On this frame we've got some fixing points for a bottle holder, that's what we're going to use to mount our battery.
trying the battery on the rail, you can see that due to the shape of the battery, that it's actually touching just here before it's fully engaged into the rail. So we're going to want to slide that rail forward so the battery can slot on properly. With the rail moved forward, the battery fully engages into the rail and gaps up nicely. You leave that gap at the top so you can slide your battery on and off when needed. Now we're going to be having a look at the wheels on the bike. Um, these wheels are 27.5 inch. What I want to do to them is put 26 inches on and that's going to lower the bike down a little bit more for carry. Um, so as you can use it, it's going to lower this down slightly. But what that will do is um, lower this pedal closer to the floor. So there's not going to be as much gap underneath it when you're riding. Um, so what I've got is I've got some shorter crank arms which I can replace. And all these steps are not needed for you on your bike. This is just going to be something what's going to make the bike better for when Kerry's riding it. Let's take a look at the wheels. The wheels, like I said, are a 26 inch wheel. This is the rear hub motor. Um, you get the rotor with it as well as in the kit and the control is built in. Um, I also uh, took this wheel, an old beaten up wheel off um, an old mountain bike and the tires I took off that as well. Um, it also had a rotor on this wheel as well. So that saved me a job. As you can see, these wheels are two different colours. The front wheel's silver. This one's got silver there, but it's mainly black. So the front wheel, um, I'm going to want to spray black so it matches in a lot better. What I've done here, guys, is I've gone ahead and sanded all this rim and the sporks, um, degreased it, decontaminated it, so it's ready for taking paint. Um, the rotor, with it being an old wheel, I don't really want to start trying to undo these i could round them off so i'm going to leave them on it's no big deal uh, i probably will replace this wheel for a new one in time so i've just gone ahead taped up the rotor and i'm just going to trim back this masking tape so it's ready for paint I'm going to go ahead and remove this tyre and inner tube, that's going to make it so much easier for painting. I'm going to give this wheel some etching primer now and we'll check on it as the build progresses as it dries and give it a few more coats. While that's drying guys we're going to flip this bike over we're going to look at installing that rear wheel. Give yourself a bit of time for installing this rear wheel, you're going to need a bit of patience with it, it's not something you're going to want to rush.
you're going to want to check make sure that spindle sits nice and deep into the frame and also make sure your washers are on the right way I also advise you fitting a torque arm to this rear wheel um, I won't be doing it in this video but I do have one and I'll be fitting it in another one I've noticed when I'm spinning the wheel the rotor is catching on the caliper um, that's something I'll address when I flip the bike back over going to want to flip the bike back over now and I can tell you that's added some considerable metal weight to the bike with the battery and the hub motor on as well. Now the cables to the hub motor um, are all plug and play, they're going to be mounted underneath here towards the battery and the cables from the LCD screen, uh, your throttle and your brakes are going to be mounted underneath here and they're going to make your way down here as well. But before we forget, let's just centralise this caliper so the pads are not rubbing on the rotor. Which is really simple to do. It's basically loosening two nuts and sliding the caliper left or right and just tightening it back up. Our wheels had a couple of coats of primer now, it's all dry and we're going to start with the matte black. While that's drying guys, uh, we're going to take our zip ties and we're going to try and make sense of some of these cables. Inside the frame you've got tabs um, for running through your um, gear cables and brake cables and all that stuff. So I'm just going to utilise them for clipping my cables too as well. Before we bring part one of this video to a close, what I'm going to want to do is just plug everything in and make sure we're getting power where we should be. All these cables are really easy to install, they're all colour coded, you can't put them in wrong, um, which is even better for someone like me. There you have it guys, this part of the build has been a success. I'd like to say thanks to all my subscribers, all the ones who've left comments and likes. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. We'll see you in part two.